Uh, we saw the pres vice presidential debate, the one and only, and some say that perhaps that changes nothing. Biden, it seems, maintains his lead. Uh, how much of that has been factored into the bond market? Well, I think at the moment it's still we're dealing with the really short term, and then it's when the stimulus coming. I don't think it's a question of the new package coming through of is it coming or not coming. It's just when is it coming and how big is it going to be. And clearly we've got another sign last night that that looks like it's going to get broken up into packages. And then beyond that, I think uh, we'll have to... I think the market's waiting or until Biden actually gets in, if he gets in, uh, and then they would deal with that in the long end. At the moment, I think they're looking at the most current package... Uh, look, it feels like it's just going to get in in November rather than December, rather than October, and bonds are starting to deal with the new supply that's likely to come to market. Again, you just have to put this in, into perspective. This is a massive package if you even put it in the context of back to 08. So this is very supportive for risk markets right now. So would you say that the stimulus is more important than the outcome of the presidential election for the bond market? Absolutely, yeah. Right now, particularly if we're looking at credit credit markets, a very supportive backdrop. And more money again. It's just money, 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 and uh, it's looking for new homes to. So it's moving from investment grade into high yield markets, and then out of US and Europe, looking more into emerging markets, and in particular into Asia as well. So there's quite a valuation gap of what we see in Asia relative to the US and Europe. And we haven't had a central bank supporting our market, and we're starting to see that money uh, eke out of where those markets have all rallied, rallied hard with central bank support into the Asian space as well. So it's very risk supportive across the curve now and moving down into the riskier securities as well. But Hayden, or continue to see more of these these reports coming out and calls on on a Biden blue sweep that this could actually lead to some type of reflation trade and move up in Treasury yields. Would that then curb some demand on some of the debt here in this part of the world? Look, what we suspect is if we did see a big sell off in bonds, um, there would be some sort of yield curve control. Uh, we've obviously got that in a number of countries now. It's obviously been in Japan forever. Uh, but we're starting to see that grow across more Western countries, like in Australia. Uh, so I think that they've done the jawboning that they needed to do in terms of the Fed funds being on hold for the foreseeable future. If we started to see the yield curve kink up and that risk the recovery and the borrowing, knowing that's how high the interest bill is now, then I suspect that you're going to start to see yield curve control come in and to flatten out that curve, particularly out to the 10 years. Out beyond that, you know, I don't think they would have uh, too much interest in controlling it, but definitely out to, you know, fives and tens. And so I think that's the sort of era we're going to be moving into, uh, particularly if you're going to have these big packages, fiscal packages, spending, and obviously they're going to be very commodity uh, bullish, uh, which at the moment we've started to see some of that due to supply constraints, but that can then become a self-fulfilling cycle. And again, I would think that would be very bullish for emerging markets as well because uh, we haven't seen a big commodity super cycle. Uh, that finished last time in about 2012 when uh, China slowed down its infrastructure spending. So this could be a western fueled infrastructure spending project, uh, which would be very commodity bullish. And I know you've always been very bullish on Chinese bonds, Hayden. Uh, how do you trade around the, the, the rebound story in China now? Some would say uh, perhaps it's more on the dollar bond market. We just had some clues there that they, they could be planning to sell about $6 billion in dollar bonds next week. Or do you stay away from the, 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 the local denominated bonds as well? I mean, how, how are you playing this? Well, I think the, the local ones actually read the recovery story pretty well. So Chinese bonds have been under pressure uh, since March. And you've seen a sell-off in the bond market there. And, uh, you know, we're close to the highs in our yields right now. A lot of that had to do with technical supply. So we had a lot of the uh, forward funding, particularly the local governments, were, were borrowing, and they had to be done by October. So they pulled it forward this year to get the infrastructure projects going. Obviously, they've gone on holidays now, and uh, bonds aren't trading this week. But we suspect that most of that is done now. So when you're looking at that uh, Bloomberg credit impulse indicator, uh, which gives you a lead on the market from, or the economy, underlying economy, from about six to nine months. 
that should be peaking out somewhere around this September, October read, and then it'll start to bend down. So what it's telling you is that you're going to have softer numbers somewhere around second quarter of next year. So this is this looks like a nice opportunity to start legging into Chinese bonds uh, and start lifting duration. We wouldn't be rushing because obviously it's still quite tight funding, particularly for the small banks in China into year end, and we usually get yeah. squeezes. So this looks like a place to start adding.